Hey everyone, welcome to another How to Webflow. In this video tutorial, I'm going to be answering Hemin's uh, question on uh, the Designership Slack channel. Uh, he wrote, Webflow Masters, I'm trying to create a slider like this below the hero banner. Do you know of a tutorial or a guide that can help me do that? And he's referring to this, and it's uh, level.co. Um, side note, this is a pretty cool <laughs> invention. Um, uh, I've seen uh, smart locks like um, August and um, I forgot there was an older, older one like that. But this one actually goes inside of the of the door lock so you don't have to change your current lock. This is not a paid advertisement. I just thought it was really cool that someone made the technology that small now. Anyways, back to the interaction. Yeah, it's really simple to do. Again, simple is relative, but all it takes is some flex box, position sticky, relative, and some interactions for scroll into view. All right, so at the end, it's gonna look like this. And yeah, that's it. Ready? Here we go. All right, so let's look at the page again. So it has this uh, hero row, and then as you scroll down, it seems like a slider because of these three dots, but it's not. It's just um, two columns, and one of the columns are set to sticky. And then as you get to a certain area of each image, that's when this content is changed. All right, so not too hard. Let's go ahead and get into it. First, let's go ahead and set a section and a container and add some dummy data. So I'm going to use a rich text and just copy and paste it three times. There we go. And let's copy and paste this section twice. So we have a bunch of dummy content. Okay. And now in between these two sections, I'm going to add another section. And this is where all the fun stuff is going to happen. Okay. So we're going to set this as a content section. Okay. And uh, this one, we're going to set to flex because Flexbox will allow us to have two columns, right? So we're setting it to flex. And also I wanna set this position to relative because when you use uh, position sticky to have that sticking effect like this on the right side, you need to use position sticky and sticky needs uh, to find a parent element that has a relative and this content section will be it. All right, so this one is done. Next, we're gonna add our two columns. So we're gonna drag in the first column. We're gonna call this column one and set this to grow if possible. And we're going to copy and paste. And for column one, we're going to duplicate this class and call it column two and now we're going to go ahead and set this to position sticky and set the stickiness to happen at zero meaning at the very top of the browser All right let's also add a height for this for 100 vh and we're done with the columns now let's go dig e ah, dig even deeper um let's go ahead and put the three images now I'm not gonna use inline image, I'm gonna use uh, background images. So uh, photo, I'm gonna call it photo. And the reason why I wanna use background images is because it helps me um, set the height for each one, even though the images could be different heights. This one I can set, uh, set the same height to all of them and crop it accordingly. So I'm gonna set this to 800 pixels tall. And yeah, let's copy and paste that two times. Now we have buckets for each photo. All right, so photo one, I'm gonna give a combo class of one and give this an image. There we go, cover, center, no repeat. And now photo two, choose an image go and photo three mm -hmm. there we go okay 
And now you can tell it's sticking, the column two is sticking, because look, the tab is still there as I scroll down. And there we go, it goes away. All right, so yeah, the stickiness is happening. All right, so the content on the right, they're actually overlaid on top of each other, okay? And they're changing by the time it gets somewhere to, towards the center of each image, all right? So let's go ahead and put uh, things on top of each other. First, I'm going to drag in a div block, and we're gonna say uh, content holder. So I'm reusing the class because I've already uh, practiced this one, but what I did was set a height of 100% and position relative. And now we get to put in our content. So let's go ahead and go here, and uh, let's call this um, the content. And each of uh, the content um, elements will have a position of absolute and full. And I'm gonna, uh, let's go ahead and, oh, and also in the content, we need to set this to flex, center, center. So that way I can put in content, let's go ahead and put in like a heading right here and say content one, copy, paste. And then for this, I'm going to press return, say content two. See how it's overlaying on top of each other? Copy, paste, content three. All right, now I'm going to go back to this first content, give it a combo class of one so I can change the background color. Uh, let's choose, let's choose that. Content two going to choose that and content three give it a combo class and choose this and let's also change this text to white there we go all right so um all the content is actually stacking on top of each other. So now we're going to have to go ahead and do some interactions to make them fade in and out. So I'm gonna go here to this first photo, go to interactions tab and do scroll into view. So I'm gonna start an animation and that's my practice one. So I'm not gonna use those. So we're gonna call this photo, oops, photo one. Okay, and now I'm going to target the first content. Okay, so the opacity when I get here, we're going to set the ease uh, to e the easing to ease and set the opacity to 100. As for the others, when they first show up, I need them to hide. So I'm going to click on the second content, add opacity. And I'm going to set this as initial state and set the opacity to zero. I'm going to do the same thing with content three. I'm going to go to the initial state, set opacity to zero. And now we can see content one. Okay. Now that's what happens when you scroll into view. Now when I scroll out of view, I need to set the opacity of the content one to zero. But we're gonna set this on an offset of 40, okay? So when it gets down to around here, so when I scroll down to about right here, then this animation is gonna happen, okay? If offset was set to zero, then this animation would happen right about here, okay? But I want it to happen right here. I want the fade out of content one to happen right about here. So I'm gonna set this to 40. All right, let's go ahead and make a new animation called photo one out. Target the first content, set the opacity, easing to ease, set it to zero. All right, that one's done. Let's go to photo two. New element trigger, scroll into view, start animation, we're gonna start the animation. Instead of zero, we're gonna set this one at 40, 
okay and content right here oops let me go back here there we go we set it to 40 and the reason why we 40 is because when we get to around here okay i want this content content two to fade in all right so while this is fading out at 40 down here this is fading in at 40 percent up here all right that's the difference between scrolling into view and out of view and using the offsets all right so now that we have that let's add a new animation F uh, photo two content and set the opacity easing to ease opacity 100 we're done with that create a new animation set the offset to 40 and what i can do is just take photo to duplicate it and call it photo to out and set this opacity to zero all right rinse and repeat so now let's go to photo three, element trigger, scroll into view, scrolled into view, set to 40. Create a new animation, call it photo three. We're gonna target the third content, set the opacity ease, keep it at 100. And for this last one, Scroll out of view, we're gonna start the animation and leave this at zero because as I scroll down, I don't want this to fade away until it is out of the screen. So right here, that's when the this content will fade away. All right? So I'm gonna set that at zero. And I'm going to duplicate this, call this photo three out, opacity set to zero. All right, let's double check. Okay, cool. All right, let's take a look. Content one, content two, content three. We're out. Three shows up, two shows up, one shows up. All right, not too hard. And yeah, I'll let you duplicate this. Have fun with it. Cool. Hopefully you've learned how to do some cool tricks to do some content switching. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Uh, if you have any suggestions for a future tutorial, I'm happy to hear it. Uh, leave that in the comments below too. Thank you for your support. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and click on the subscribe button, the like, and the notification bell. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at the Pixel Geek. Uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. And as always, make the web beautiful together. See ya.